viralliset esittelyt alkuun. Pasi Raassina on mun nimi. Mä oon IAPen toimari Suomessa. Ja tota, mulla on kiva rooli tänään. Mä enimmäkseen hiljaa. Pikkusen alustan tätä aihetta tässä, tässä tota, Niklaksen kanssa. Ja sen jälkeen vähän fasilitoi varmaan lopussa Q&A-sessiota. Mutta muuten kuulette asiantuntijoita. Mulla on juontokaverina tänään Tiirsiötä. Niklas, tehdään siis tapahtuma sitten yhdessä Tiirsin kanssa. Koulutussetti tuota attentioniin liittyen. Haluatko Niklas sitten esitellä itse ihmisille ja kertoa, että minkälainen mies on kyseessä? Joo, voi. Tervetuloa munkin puolesta tähän aamupäivän seminaariin. Mun nimi on tosiaan Niklas Sveen ja tuota, toimin Tiirsin country managerina täällä Suomessa. Yes. Ja tuossa tota, on meidän agenda. Pikkusen puhutaan alkuun siis tuota Niklaksen kanssa. Esimerkiksi siitä, miksi Tiirs on ollut nyt vuoden verran Suomen markkinassa. Sitten päästetään Ludwig ääneen ja päästään ihan tähän tota, koulutuswebinaarin aiheeseen. Eli puhutaan luovista toteutu- toteutuksista ja attentionista. Ja niin kuin sanottu, niin lopussa on sitten Vartin qa sessio johon me totta kai Niklaksen kanssa toivotaan, että olette tosi aktiivisia ja esitätte sitten kysymyksiä sitten Ludvigille ja Niklakselle. Noin. Tota, alkuun vähän käyttäytymissääntöjä, niin kuin tuossa mainitsin jo, niin toivotaan, että olette aktiivisia. Pyritään vastaamaan kaikkiin teidän kysymyksiin tuon lopun kuueta osion aikana ja tota, kaiken näköiset kysymykset on arvokkaita, eli, eli sinne saa, saa tota, pitää chattia sitten kuumana. Muut, siis muita käyttäytymissääntöjä ei hirveästi ole. Tämä on hyvin turvallinen tila teille kaikille. Olette äänettömiä ja olette sitten näkymättömiä ja voitte turvallisesti nauttia tästä tota, webinaarista. Ja jos teille tulee teknisiä ongelmia, vanha keino toimii yleensä aika hyvin. Eli refreshatkaa saitti, se yleensä toimii hyvin. Jos sekään ei auta, eli teillä on hyvin vahvoja, pahoja ongelmia, pistäkää viestiä toimisto.iav.fi. Janniina katsoo, katsoo asiat ja tekniset härvelit kuntoon, että, että pystytte osallistumaan uudestaan. Saatte tästä todennäköisesti huomenna vielä tallenteen ja palautekyselyyn sitten sähköpostiin. Palautekyselyyn pääsee myös vastaamaan sitten qa osion aikana. Eli näin. Olette siis IAV-tapahtumassa, joka me tehdään yhdessä sitten Tirsin kanssa. Tirs on siis kumppanina tässä. Ja perinteinen IAV-slaidi. Jos olette käyneet IAV-tapahtumissa aikaisemmin, tämän vuoden aikana olette nähneet tämän joka kerta. Käytän siis aika vikkelästi sitten läpi. IAV on digimainonnan ja markkinoinnin etujärjestö. Toiminut Suomessa 25 vuotta, perustettiin Jenkeissä 30 vuotta sitten. Se mitä me tehdään, niin tota, me tehdään paljon tapahtumia, meillä on työryhmiä, koulutuksia, tuotetaan ja välitetään markkinatietoja, tehdään myös vaikuttamistyötä viranomaisiin päin, niin että meidän tota, jäsenten markkinaedellytykset sitten paranisivat. Meidän lupaus meidän jäsenille on se, että jos te annatte meille teidän aikaa, niin me luvataan, että teidän oma osaaminen digimainontaan liittyen sitten paranee. IAV-juuret on nimenomaan digimainonnan kohdentamisessa ja mittaamisessa. Maailma muuttuu, IAV muuttuu kanssa siinä. Siihen me tuodaan uusia asioita tämän kovan ytimen ympärille. Pidetään kovasta ytimestä kuitenkin. Kiinni. Ollaan puhuttu viime vuodet tosi paljon mainonnan tuloksellisuudesta, verkkokaupasta ja vastuullisesti. Mutta kore on nyt ja tulevaisuudessa mainonnan kohdentaminen ja mittaa. Noin. Noin. Ja tota, Niklas, kiva, että olet hostaamassa tätä tota, mun kanssa. Sä oot ollut nyt vuoden verran country manager tiisillä. Niin tota, haluatko kertoa, sinulla on aika mielenkiintoinen työura ja olet tehnyt niin kuin aika paljon kaikkea elämässä ehtinyt tehdä, niin hyvin lyhyesti, että minkälainen mies on kyseessä? No joo, kyllä, tota, kiitos Pasi ja kiitos, että tässä saatiin, saatiin tulla kumppaniksi tähän, tähän webinaariin. No joo, sanotaan näin, että et, tota, vähän yli 25 vuotta media-alalla, media-alalla tullut, tullut työskennelty ja, tota, ja tästä nyt vissiin pääsee. 
pääse minnekään, niin hyvä, hyvä, hyvä niin, että edelleen tuntuu, tuntuu olevan, olevan kaverilla, kaverilla niin kuin intoa puskea eteenpäin. Tosissaan niin, niin tässä nyt digi, digimaailmassa on ollut vuodesta 2005 ja, ja tota, aloittanut sieltä ihan niin kuin display-puolen. Display-puolen niin kuin Ad Networkissä oli White Rap niminen yritys ja, ja siellä on sitten tullut tutuksi myös Myöshän kansainväliset jätit, jotka silloin ei ollut vielä jättejä, Facebook ja, ja sitten myöhemmin Spotify. Ja tuota, sitten sit siirryn tutustumaan tähän YouTube, YouTube-maailmaan, kun, kun tämä Play, Play Network perustettiin Suomeen. Ja, ja tuota, sit 2014, no aika, aika lähellä 10 vuotta sitten, niin astuu sitten tähän Austrian videon ihmeellisen maailmaan, kun, kun tuota, perustettiin playa tänne Suomen, Suomen markkinoille. Ja tämä nyt on aika semmoinen luonnollinen jatkumo sitten tälle mun, mun omalle uralle, että tuodaan, tuodaan tämmöinen globaali Austrian pioneeri Tiis tänne, tänne Suomen markkinoille vihdoinkin. Just näin. Haluatko kertoa vähän kans perusjuttuja Tiisistä? Joo, il, ilman muuta. Ilman muuta. Tiis tosissaan on, on globaali, globaali Peluri. Me ollaan 50. markkinassa kansainvälisesti ja tuota, Tiis on, on Austrian mainonnan pioneeri, pioneeri ja tuota, siitä, siitä ehkä yritys tunnetaan niin kuin parhaiten. Mut tänä päivänä me, me toimitaan tämmöisen omni, omni-channel-ympäristössä ja, ja, tuota, ja sitten ehkä tämä, mikä, mikä mulla vei Mielenkiinto tämän tiissä on myös se, että meillä on, meillä on hyvin vahvasti tämä Connected, connected TV, eli tämä CTV, CTV tullut mukaan keinovalikkoon, että sekin tuntuu vähän tämmöinen pal- paluu ju- juurilleen, että, että toi uran, uran alku oli tosissaan Maikkarilla, Maikka, sinäkin Pasi on ollut, niin tota, tämä on vähän tämmöinen paluu, paluu juurilleen myös sitten osittain tämän, tämän uuden, uuden tota, bisnesalueen kautta. Kyllä. Ja yli 55 maata, joka näin? Joo, kyllä. Ja. Ja siis tosissaan niin tuota, Pohjoismaat on nyt uusin, uusin, uusin tiismarkkina tässä, että Ruotsissa, Ruotsissa aloitettiin kaksi vuotta sitten, niin Tanska, Tanska ja Suomi tuossa viime vuonna elokuussa, että aika lähellä yksi vuosi ollaan nyt Suomessa, Suomessa oltu, oltu tuota, läsnä, läsnä tuota, ja tuota, mä odotan tästä kyllä erittäin hyvää, hyvää tuota, matkaa. Ja. Ja sitten ehkä vielä, vielä lopuksi, ennen kuin, ennen kuin annan, annan puheenvuoron meidän varsinaiselle, varsinaiselle pääpuhujalle, niin tuota, Tees Ad Manager on, on se meidän, meidän pää, pääalusta, että siellä, siellä sitten kaikki, kaikki nämä kytkeytyy yhteen. yhteen. Että se on niin meidän, meidän end-to-end end platform, joka lanseerataan nyt, nyt myös, tai lanseerattu Suomessa nyt myös kesällä, ja tuota, tämä me tuodaan sitten toimistojen ja mainosten ulottuvuuden, että tota, tervetuloa vaan kokeilemaan ja muun saa ottaa yhteyttä, jos sitä homma kiinnostaa enemmän. Oikein hyvä. Äh, Niklas, sulla on poikkeuksellisen paljon niin kuin digimainonnan kokemusta myös tota, Suomen ulkopuolelta. Miten sä, näet, niin kuin, miten sä näet Suomen digimarkkinan Tilanteen. Onko teillä jotain erityispiirteitä, jotka näkee vasta silloin, kun on ollut, tota, viettänyt paljon aikaa sitten Suomen ulkopuolella? No hyvä, hyvä, hyvä kysymys. Ja kyllä mä tota, niin kuin pohdin tässä ennen, ennen kuin tän, tänne tulin. Ja, 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 tota, en mä nyt oikeasti pysty havainnostamaan mitään hirveän niin kuin erityispiirteitä, mutta, mutta se, mikä, mikä tässä nyt ehkä on tullut, tullut vuosien varrella, jotenkin selväksi, että, 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 että mä seuraan esimerkiksi Jenkkeä tosi paljon, että yleensä ne mitä tapahtuu Jenkeissä, ne siirtyy Eurooppaan, Keski-Eurooppaan ja sit sitä, sitä kautta sit Pohjoismaan ja niin Suomeen. Ja kuten sanottu, niin Connected TV on, on se, mihin mä itse henkilökohtaisesti uskon ja uskon, että sillä tulee olla iso, iso rooli myös tässä Suomen, Suomen markkinassa ja tässä laajemmassa Pohjoismaiden markkinassa. Yes. Digimainoinnan osuus Suomessahan on 53 pinnaa vuonna 2023 kaikesta mediamainonnasta. Mulla on pikkuset jäljessä, joka voi olla aika yllättävääkin Euroopan keskiarvosta, joka oli 63 pinnaa. Näetkö jotain semmoisia niin syitä, että miksi, miksi no näin on? Hy- hyvä kysymys tuo, tuokin, ja tietysti täytyy nyt tässä, tässä nyt uskoa omaan, 
Om, omaan yri, yritykseen tä, tässä, eli mä nyt ehkä jotenkin tuntuu siltä, että Austrian videoja ja, ja displayja ja, ja nimenomaan tämä niin kuin, tämän puolen niin tekeminen on Suomessa, Suomessa ja pohjoisia vähän, vähän niin kuin taka-alalle, jos, jos vertaan ihan, ihan niin kuin Pohjois-Amerikkaan ja, ja Eurooppaankin. Ja tota, siihen tietysti voi olla monta, monta syytä, mutta mä uskon, että, että me omalta osaltamme nyt tuodaan sellaisia sellaisia työkaluja ja, ja analytiikkaa, analytiikkaa sitten tähän, tähän tota Suomen markkinalle, että me saadaan, saadaan enemmän niin asiakkaita ja toimistoja innostumaan myös Austrian, Austrian markkinasta, joka tietysti on, on hyvin, hyvin iso, että se taitaa olla, että se Euroopassa on isompi kuin tuo Instream, Instream tällä hetkellä, niin, niin, tota, niin, niin, niin se, se, on, se on syy, miksi täällä ollaan ja, ja, tota, ja, ja, ja myös, myös jäädään. Eli kasvua, kasvuvaraa löytyy teidän 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 No aivan, aivan varmasti, aivan no. varmasti. Ja tietysti meillä on, meillä on vahva usko tähän, niin kuin, tähän avoimeen in, internettiin. Ja, ja tota, tietysti sosiaalinen media on, on iso ja, ja tulee jäämään niin isoksi, mutta mä, mä uskon, että meillä on, on, on hyvät suhteet julkaisuun, premi-julkaisijoihin. Ja, ja tota, että et me saadaan niin hyvällä hyvillä, niin analyytiikalla työkalulla, niin me saadaan erittäin toimivia, toimivia kampanjoita myös, myös asiakkaille Suomessa. Ja, ja tietysti tämä, mistä mist Ludwig Kostkula kertoo lisää, tämä niin kuin luovan, luovien optimointi eri, erityyppisillä niin kuin attention AI-menetelmillä, niin se, se, sillä on niin kuin äärimmäinen niin se on iso rooli mun mielestä ja niin kuin tulevaisuudessa. Oikein hyvä. Hei, rakennetaan loppuun vielä ennen kuin päästään Ludwig ääneen, niin hyvin semmoinen lyhyt aasin sieltä sitten meidän alkupuheen ja attentionin välille. Totta, yksi varmaan top puheenaiheesta Suomessa ja Euroopassa digimainontaan liittyen on ollut tänä ja viime vuonna attention. Noussut tosi nopeasti ihan tärkeimmiksi puheenaiheiksi, niin tota, mistä sä näet, että miksi, miksi just nyt on se aika, jolloin pitäisi olla mainostajien toimistojen tosi kiinnostunut attentionista? No, mä sanoisin näin, että, että tietysti tämä kuulostaa tietysti ehkä vähän kliseeltä, mutta, mutta tietysti kuluttajat on entistä valveutuneempia ja, ja tota, osaa, osaa lukea, lu, lukea jo niin kuin eri, eri medioita, varsinkin tuolla niin kuin, niin kuin, sanotaan, sanoma, sanomalehtien niin kuin puolella. Että meidän täytyy niin kuin saada lukijan, lukijan, lukijan niin kuin huomio entistä, entistä niin kuin tehokkaammin. Ja tämä myös liittyy tietysti tämä mainonnan suunnittelun aika, aika niin kuin, sanotaan olennaisena osana, että meidän täytyy myös, myös yhdessä, yhdessä luovien toimistojen ja, ja, ja mediatoimistojen asiakkaana niin luoda sellaista niin mainontaa, mikä, mikä oikeasti niin kuin toimii. Joo. Ja se, että meidän pitää niin kuin tietää, tietää mitkä, ne, mitkä ne kampanjan tavoitteet on, että sitten niin tiesin kaltaiset toimet pystyy myös tuottamaan sellaista materiaalia, sellaisia formaatteja, mitkä, mitkä vastaavat sitten näihin kampanjan tavoitteisiin. Just näin. Ja faktahan on, että kyllä moderni länsimainen kuluttaja esimerkiksi törmää satoihin tuhansiin mainosviesteihin nykyään joka päivä. Ja tota, kyllä huomiosta käydään todella kovaa kilpailua ja kaikki mitä siihen pystytään uutta tietoa tuottamaan on varmaan aika arvokasta. Olisikohan tämä Niklas kuule siinä ja äh, pitäisikö meidän kutsua Ludwig kuule esille? Ludwig, are you there? Welcome! Yes, I'm there. Nice to, nice to see you all. Nice to meet you all. Nice to see you all. How are you doing today? Really good. Really excited to be here. Um, I Excellent. only understood, um, well, nothing because I don't speak Finnish. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I hope you said some nice things. Yeah. We will give you a, a brief what we have been discussing after the, after the tonight's uh, show, show today. Yeah. Let me, let me start your presentation. And we will go. Yeah, I can. I can share. No, right. actually, you are you are using screen share, so so. Yes, exactly. Feel free to start it whenever you want. Perfect. You you can all see my screen, right? Yeah, everything is perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Seconds. I can also see you. Perfect. All right. Let's um. Yes, let's jump right into yeah. it. Um, Have fun. I'm I'm here today to um, tell you a little bit about um, how we optimize our creatives towards attention, and how this really really maximizes maximizes campaign output. 
Um, we have 45 minutes planned for that and um, of course a question session um, afterwards. So if you have any during the session, just type them in the chat. Um, Nicholas and Pazi, they're collecting them. Um, don't be shy. Um, we're, we're here to help and uh, here to answer um, questions. All right, um, let's, uh, let's jump into it. You already had a short Teats introduction, um, but one thing that I really wanted to highlight um, is this. So around 10 years ago, we reinvented the outstream um, ad slot. Um, we were the first ones to include um, video in there. So these are going to be these two um, placements right here. And then um, as of new, I think it was already mentioned, we are now also um, offering CTV or in this case, um, LG home screen, LG native. Um, so we have another um, really nice big premium um, placement that we can play around on in terms of creativity. And the reason why I'm highlighting this is, is because it gives us a really different starting point compared to other platforms. And as you can see right here, our Im average imbue time is over 11 seconds. And that's just due to the fact that we're in a different environment, right? We're in this lean in environment um, where the users are actively looking for an article they want to read and then they're reading it and they have to scroll through the whole thing to, to read it, right? So we know they're gonna see our ads. And of course, for, for other platforms, it's different, right? So we have like this mindless scroll, super fast. Um, and we don't really have a lot of attention on the ad slots to start this because we're watching TV on the side or sitting um, yeah, somewhere in the train. <clears throat> and um, the reason um, we want to talk about attention, the first thing I, I want to talk to you about is, um, is actually the difference between viewability. So I think we, we all know um, viewability as an industry benchmark um, for, for how ads are seen and how viewable they are, um, but it's actually not the same as attention. And um, I have a little example here, um, take a look. So that was two seconds. So about as long um, as, as you would have for like a um, average social ad. And just in your mind, um, do, the, do the exercise with me. Um, what did you focus on? What was the location? Um, is there anything that you remember um, out of that visual? And um, some of you are going to be, there was a visual. Um, some of you might really actually see that we were on Times Square and then um, a lot of people um, are going to look at, um, you know, these things that have high contrast. And um, we actually have an AI tool for that um, that I'm gonna, also going to show um, in a second. Um, but what really strikes out in terms of attention um, is that the center, right, the center building also always gets looked at um, and then all these things that have contrast. But all these other ads, are also technically viewable, right? And we have, of course, it's different in, in the real world, um, but of course we have a lot of ad space, we have a lot of input, um, and a lot of things are not, not actually getting seen because they just go under in, yeah, in the wide noise of, um, of content. And <clears throat> the big question is, why should you care? And I, I have multiple reasons for that. And the first one is um, that attention is a really really nice driver and in, in, in for the first seconds and the first second of an ad or of pretty much everything that we do the first impression that is really important and to look at that um let's take a look at what happens in the first second when we see something and at the very beginning 50 to 100 millisecond this is where attention happens right it's hard coded in every human brain that you have to look at certain things right you have to make sure Okay, is it danger? What what is happening? Any type of movement, you know, red colors, you have to look at them. And after 300 milliseconds, this is where we start to kind of um, get emotion in there. So you, um, you're categorizing, okay, is this friend or foe? Is it something that I like? Is it something that I don't like? Um, so you're starting to make an emotional connection. And of course, this all of this happens subconsciously. So you're not thinking about this. This happens in your brain without you ever knowing. And after 400 milliseconds, um, this is where cognitive load starts to um, starts to work. So this is where our brain actually starts to think about these things. We're trying, we're doing pattern recognition. We're trying to categorize it into different groups in our brain, um, and try. And this is where the first 
like the first thinking actually starts. And then only after one full second of looking at things, of being cognitive about them, and this is actually where memory starts. So it's pretty obvious, I guess, if we want people to memorize our, our ads, we have to first make sure that they're seeing that we have that first um, initial boost um, in attention in there. But also in terms of media KPIs, and this number to me is, is to be honest, it's just crazy, um, but it is true, um, is that 70% of viewable ads are actually not viewed. And, and I think I think it's amazing. 70%, that means 30% are actually seen, and the other the other rest just poof, it just disappears. Um, and that's just crazy to me. But it's also pretty obvious when we look at you know our consumption throughout the day. And what people seem to forget that attention um, is is a scarce resource, right? Um, we only we only can do so many things. We only have 24 hours in a day, um, and out of those 24 hours, we're actually, in general, watching 84 minutes of ads, and only the best nine minutes of these, best in terms of content placement, timing, relevance, and only the best nine minutes of those will actually be seen, and all the other 75 minutes, again, poof, and that that that's just crazy to me, and. The two, the two things that we need to do um, in order to optimize towards attention. The first one is grabbing attention. I think that's pretty obvious, getting the user in there. But then also the other part is holding their attention, right? So if we have longer form content, we really want to make sure that throughout the whole experience, we're keeping them and we're not losing them um, at maybe crucial points um, of the experience. <clears throat> but also, um, attention is also a really, really nice predicator of outcomes. So um, in terms of branding, um, when we see a 5% increase of attention volume, um, so how long the people were looking at the ad, we see a 40% increase um, in um, market awareness. So it's a really, really nice indicator. And in terms of sales, it has like 90% um, uh, predictive outcomes to um, sales lift. Um, which is 100% more correlated than um, standard viewability metrics. So it's a much, much better predicator or prediction tool um, to see, hey, what is the better attention value? This ad, this creative is probably going to have a better output um, in, um, in real life than just, um, just the viewability metric. And what we found, this also concludes my little introduction into, um, into attention. Um, what we found at Teats are, are these four key drivers um, in terms of attention. And the first one, of course, um, is quality of media. So we have to make sure we are within these premium publishers. We have to make sure that people um, yeah, want to read the articles and then we have like a fitting, fitting ad experience in there, um, which of course also leads us to the, to the ad experience itself. So we have to make sure everything is snappy, loads nicely, technically works um, perfectly. And because we don't want, you know, when we're clicking on an ad, we don't want to load it forever, right? Then we're, then we're gonna just um, return to the page before. And um, one thing that's also really important is, is relevance, right? So, um, which, which we can do really nicely because we have like this contextual settings in, in all these um, articles. Um, but relevance is really important, seeing the, finding the user at the right time, at the right place. And the last, the last main driver of, um, of attention is creativity. And that's the reason why I'm here today. This is um, what I kind of want to um, show, show to you. And <clears throat> let's jump into it. Um, and the reason why creativity or the creatives are so important, um, not just because um, then I wouldn't have a job, um, but this number probably is more important. Um, it's actually that two thirds of media effectiveness is driven by creative. So of course, everything has to go together, right? Targeting, setup, um, everything has to work together. But create the creative itself, the asset itself, is usually sometimes underlooked, and, and it's a really, really big lever that we can pull to optimize towards campaigns. And what this looks like. Um, is something like this. Um, so on the left hand side, you have the original. And on the right hand side, you have um, the, the edited version. 
And the only thing that we did here, so we had we had this original video um, delivered by the by the clients. Um, we already have we have some branding down here, um, so it's not a bad video at all. I don't want to bash it, um, but. All we did on the right hand side is we added a little bit of contrast. We made the branding a little bit more visible. We added a call to action throughout the whole experience. Um, and then the last thing that we did um, is we, we added an end card. So I probably show some this side as well. So one thing that I that I personally also hate um, is when, when the ad is actually played and then you have this super ugly gray replay button or even worse, like the new ad is playing um, because I just wanted to click on it and then I have the wrong com the wrong campaign. Um, with us, you will always get an end card um, that recaps all the important information, has a CTA on there. And this is also where we generate around 30% um, of clicks. But what's really interesting to me is um, that these super small optimizations already have a really, really big impact. Um, so even though it was basically the same video and we, 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 we added content, we just made it a little bit easier to understand. Um, we had a plus 2.5% in view through rate, um, which is pretty nice. Of course, CTR plus 37%, um, that's probably due to the C CTA being in there the whole time. And then of course the end card being in there. And then um, we also had an upper of over 50% um, of APM attention uh, per miller. Um, that's a like a comparative um, attention metric um, that we can also explain later. Um, but so the, the results are crazy just by adding these super small adaptations. But of course, these small adaptations, th this is this is not what I'm here to show you. Um, we can, of course, um, put this um, into the next gear and into the next level. And by the way, before I show it to you, you can also scan these QR codes on the right-hand side. Um, this way you can, you can play around with the creatives and have a look at them for yourself. Um, that's always quite interesting to see them and to engage with them on your own. So for this version of the, um, this is a 3D video. And um, as you can see on the left-hand side, the original, um, didn't exist. So this is one that we actually built together with Audi. We had a um, we had a pretty extensive partnership with them, and um, all of this was template driven. So we of course did our homework, right? So we, we had consistent branding in there all the time. We had the Audi mo model in there, and then of course we had this visual clue where the car drives towards you. We have like this really cool 3D effect that really pops out, and the car just really yeah is really nicely visible. And it also gave us the opportunity to kind of hide these legal data down here. Um, and it's it's disconnected from the top part because we have to include it in Germany. Um, the DRT device is clickable. So we try to hide all the important, all the, the necessary legal information um, while still keeping like this super interesting and creative um, with, with a really nice um, view on the car. And of course we can, we can translate that to other other channels as well. So in this case, um, it was for our LG home screen, um, and it's technically it's 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 pretty simple, right? So what we do is we cut out a little bit more of the of the screen, and this is how um, it looks like the the ring the the product is flying out of the screen, and um, yeah, I think I think to be honest, it just looks really amazing, um, and. It's super attention grabbing. I think it's kind of hard not to look at it. And so these are the types of twists that we're really looking for. How can we showcase products, different scenes in 3D, um, in 3D, and how can yeah, how can we really elevate existing campaign assets, right? So this was purely built um, from an, an existing um, video already. And for that, um, and especially with our with our omnichannel approach. We're always looking for inspiration um, everywhere around us. Um, and of course, it also makes a lot of sense to have these campaigns um, be of, of one feather, be of one look throughout all their, all their platforms. So we really try to make sure that we're capturing creative ideas um, and trying to keep the CI and the whole look and feel as close as possible. So on the left-hand side, you can see the, the out of home mock-up. Um, and then on the right-hand side, this is how, how we translated it um, 
So again, this was just um, just a video file and where we cut out all these elements on our own. Um, and you can see it, it really elevates this also, this really good spot already because it's so much more attention grabbing. And it, it, almost, it almost looks like it's going to explode out of the screen. Um, so it's uh, pretty tough to ignore. All right. Um, but also in terms of, um, you know, a little bit smaller adaptations also in terms of display. And this is one of my, one of my favorite um, examples um, because this creative right here, we, um, I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen, but you can probably see it if you scan the QR code. Um, so what we did here is it was all about, you know, freshness and drinkability and that summer feeling. So we made sure that, you know, the, the glasses are bubbling a little bit and um, there's a water droplet running down here. So everything just looks really fresh. And then the second thing that we did, and it's it's so simple and so brilliant, um, is we, we included this, um, this hot air balloon that they had in their static. And the one thing we did is we just, we just let it go through there as a cinema graph throughout the whole experience. And the results were incredible. So this creative um, had an 80% ad recall and, and 58% um, of brand linkage. So really strong results. And the interview time for this was 15 seconds, um, which, is, which is crazy. Um, and my hypothesis is that people were just waiting for these for the hot air balloon just to to come back and see what happens. Um, and it's just a really cool, soothing, creative. Um, even though it, it looks um, it looks like um, like a super minor minor adaptations. Yeah. One thing that is also really important for our platform and that we're really trying to leverage whenever we can is um, as I told you before, we know that the user has to scroll through the article, right? So they have to scroll through the article to read it. And that scrolling motion, we're using that um, to let the user engage. And that could look something like this. In this case, it's a 3D flow. So based on the scrolling behavior here, the product turns um, and also comes um, towards you. So we have like this really nice attention on the product. And the second thing that we did is we we added the, the branding and the CTA on time. So at the beginning, we have really like full focus on the product. And then we we have like as a final visual, we have everything together. John Pogot here, scandal, the product nicely in view, and then um, the CTA. And what's what's really, really great about this um, is that we really see an immense uplift um, in attention compared to um, like standard platforms or standard Lumen metrics. So we had it 352 percent uplift in attention um so it's incredible what what these types of creatives um, in our platform can do um compared to other placements just give, giving you giving you a second to to play around with it <clears throat> all right but we're, of course, we're not only um, we're not only looking at um, you know these visual cues. Um, we're also trying to increase relevancy um, wherever we can. And one tool of, for that um, would be DCO created, right? So of course we can do all these things like weather targeting, geo targeting, day time. We we even have. Um, different weather sections for like pollen, like count, or if it's like ice cream weather, UV index, um, all these things. Um, but we can also include um, live performance events, live sporting events um, in our creatives. And of course, this was really relevant um, this year with um, the Olympics, with the um, European Cup, and um, also Champions League. In this case, it was Champions League. And the way that we did it for for this campaign, um, we had a we had an always on layer with a with a video, and then also with um, this display format, we're just really highlighting like the key metrics. We really wanted to showcase, you know, the two testimonials. Um, really wanted to showcase the product, um, but of course we have branding in there, and then we have all these regulatory things in there with um, BOEFA and all those branding. And making it really, really relevant for um, for football viewers. And of course, we're also adding you know movement to it to draw on the user, so it's not just 
um, the static key visual as it was before. And what we did is for um, for the games then is we um, first we had a we had a countdown um, where, where we um, developed actually a headline together with the client um, because it's last chance to um, to buy lace. Um, so kind of creating that urgency, but also having that really nice connection of um, you know the brand football soccer and um, and um, yeah just really building that nice connection. And the other thing that we did on this, and um, we we did a little bit of like a sound off optimization, um, because this was was, was uh, pretty sound reliant. Um, so we just added like a small super sound here. Um, we usually we go a little bit bigger on these, um, but in this case, we really wanted to show um, to highlight the bottom part and make sure that the users were going out and buying the lace before the big game. And then during the games, um, we, we did something like this. Um, so um, we had live results um, from the game. Um, so if you were lucky enough to, to see that um, at um, while watching football, um, you would get this right here. You would get the live results. You would know who would, sco would have scored. Um, and then, of course, we had um, for like a day after, um, we, had, we had this as a, as a recap of the game also. So um, quite successful campaign, um, and I think it shows it's just really important that we have to make make our creators stand out and um, yeah and be relevant for the users um, either in a super visual way um, or if we're a little bit more complex if we have like these bigger bigger branding tasks um, um, with, with solutions like this. And um, the one thing that I want to show, Casey, I, I, was, I was really focusing on awareness formats because really they really showcase how, how we focus um, in attention. And the one thing that I also wanted to showcase you, and this is, um, I said the flow, uh, the cinemagraph was one of my favorite um, examples. This one right here is probably um, my favorite example um, overall, because this is, um, this is a video select or drag and drop. And if we're looking at it, um, we have we have again done all our homework, right? So we have branding in here. We have a nice key visual and um, with the headline. We have the product up here, and then we actually have three different USPs, um, and they're animated. So you can drag and drop, and it immediately shows the user, hey, you need to engage here, um, and you need to. It becomes really clear that the user can engage here, and then when they do that, um, I'm just going to show it to you. It actually starts um, a short six second video that is actually to add the answer um, or, or the yeah, the content of that USP. So we had a, like a really nice connection um, of those videos um, and those uh, and those USPs. And the great thing about this was, um, let me just show like this, um, that we can actually find out which of these USPs was um, dragged the most, was engaged with the, with the most. And for this one, we had like a, and don't take this as a benchmark piece because it's way, way too high. For this one, we had a 15% um, engagement rate or 16, um, which is which is super high. We're usually, we're trying to aim for like three, four, five percent um, So this was just incredible. And it also had a good click rate because everything was interconnected, right? So we have a nice overview, we have the direct answer what you want to know, and then the users were actually um, enticed to um, to click on the link. Um, so this is this is one of like a, the simple examples or, or the great examples of what we can do in terms of um, engaging ads. And of course, um, this could be like a full a full session again. We have we have a lot of other um, engaging formats like you know virtual try on. Um, you know, like the little card swipe carousels. So everything that is um, that makes it interesting for the user to um, to engage with it, because we really see that when we're having these interactive moments um, or the interactive elements, it really um, really helps um, with the memory of this ad. And I always compare to these um, social media questions, right? So, hey, how do you like the new Fiat 500? Um, they don't want to know if how you like the car. They just want you to think about it for like a second. They want you an idea what to engage with it. And we do the same thing, but as a um, in a meaningful way, I would say, and where you actually find out more about the product, um, but also in a much, much simpler way because you just have to drag and drop and don't actually have to type anything. 
All right. So one thing that's also really important is how do we how do we tie all of these learnings together? And um, I'm pretty sure after these 45 minutes, um, all of you um, are going to have a big head because it's a lot of information. Um, but the way we try to tie it together, and this is um, this is also something that you can um, take advantage of, is um, our evidence-based um, attention framework. And one thing to note before um, I start explaining is all of these steps, all of these different offerings are um, free of extra charge. They're just connected to um, media spend. So you have to unlock a certain amount um, to, to get those. But to be honest, I think the best way is just to talk to Niklas um, about it, and he will make sure that you um, get the right offering, get the right help, and um, we, we do the right things. So in, in our evidence-based attention framework, the first step um, would be pre-optimization um, tests. So something like Lumen, Real Eyes, or Neurons. Um, I would explain that um, a little bit more in depth in a second. So this is where we really take a look at your creatives, at your assets, um, and we can we we have pretty good partnerships with brand where they actually send us their videos before before they actually produce it for TV. We look at it, we do our optimizations for our platform, and then they actually take that um, to optimize their TV campaigns, which which is of course um, is like knighthood um, for us because um, that's uh, yeah that's that's pretty um, it's a pretty great honor. The second step would be um, something like the ATE. and the ATE is um, our I would say flagship workshop um, because it also really represents how we at Teats like working. Um, so the, the way it works, um, you you and the client, um, we would get um, we would get a briefing, like a media briefing, but also like a, a creative briefing. What is the campaign about? What are the things that you really like about the campaign that we need to highlight, that we need to understand? But also, what are the things that you don't like about the campaign? Maybe it's a little bit too dark for your uh for your like for you, or maybe uh, we have that quite a lot where you have global assets and the local market is just not really happy with them because they made some learnings in the past that something different works better, right? So <clears throat> we, we take all, all these consideration, all these assets um, that you deliver, it's probably a standard asset package, and we take that and then we build a complete toolkit out of this. And um, we then come together in like a one and a half, um, one hour, two hour session, depending on, on how much content we have, how long it's going to be. Um, and then we guide you through the full toolkit and um, the clients can be there, the, the creative agency can be there, or the media agency and the client have to be there. Um, you go, we go through it, you just say, hey, we have a better visual for that. Or, hey, can you move the, the, the logo one pixel to the left? Um, and instead of writing 100 emails, um, we just do it in one swift um, one and a half hour session. And usually the next day, um, we already have implemented all that feedback, or sometimes even during the session. Um, and then we usually plan for like a like a couple of days for final approval from client side. So it's like a pretty short, it's like two to three weeks um, of time, and um, an effort of like maybe two hours for the client um, to to get these sessions. And the output is usually much much better um, than if we were to just do it ourselves. Because of course, if we collaborate and you know the brand expert, the media expert, and the platform experts come together, the output of course is going to be the best. Um, and then of course, um, once we've once we've optimized all the creatives, um, then we go into testing. So um, first uh, first step would be then doing um, also like a, a Cantor a Lumen panel based test. Um, where we really find out what creatives work the best. Um, and this is before you've spent any any money on the actual campaign, right? Um, then, of course, um, step four, during, um, while the campaign is running, we're doing live measurements. So we're doing um, attention measurement, Lumen Adelaide, um, and, and we can see what creatives work the best, where do we need to maybe adjust the budget, where do we need to maybe change something? And then the last step, of course, and, and this is kind of um, kind of a given in my mind, is of course the reporting. So um, you will al always get, um, like I said, the, the attention data, all the um, all the reportings. You also have um, really nice transparency via TAM. Um, so it's really important for us that 
that you also get all the this data. And this is actually then where step one starts again, right? So, um, well, maybe not actually, maybe there's one one step that is not on here. And that's, that I was just like to say, just like creative advice. Because what we of course then do is we take this, all this data or everything that we've learned for the campaign and start at the beginning, talk to the client, say, this is what we've learned. This is what we found out. And then of course we're using that for the next campaign. So it's, um, it's more like a circle. Um, and it really shows that when we're doing this and when we're learning from campaign to campaign and um, we're getting better every time and the results speak for themselves. But now I wanted to quickly show you um, what we can do with our creative lab and within our atelier. Um, and the first tool that we're using um, is realized and probably um, pretty well known at this point. Um, so here we, we are testing with real people and we can also take a look at um, all these emotions and we're really finding out where the, the peak moments um, of interest are or maybe where they aren't. And, and we can then also give recommendations in terms of a recut, or of course we can use that for display formats. We can really highlight these scenes in a different way. But of course, um, in 2024, um, everything everything has to be done by an AI, and it's of course the same for us. And um, we really um, really appreciate this tool. Um, it's, it's a partner they call Neurons, and they've been in the, um, in the neuroscience business for over 20 years. And they, they pretty much started um, with, you know, standard brain scanning, eye tracking, you know, the glasses. Um, and they had all these data points, um, and they just built an, an algorithm and now an AI out of this. And this AI um, works really quickly. And the great thing is it's about, 95% accurate. So it gives us like a really good indication of where the users are looking and um, where the attention is focused. And, and what you can see here is on the left hand side is the eye tracking. Um, so we have a lot of attention on the David Beckham uh, branding and on his face. Um, the only main difference is the positioning and then real people do find David Beckham a little bit sexier than um, the AI prediction. But what's really important is we can actually now go to H&M and say, hey, if the H&M logo is important to you, um, if you want to highlight that during the campaign, um, we need to move it somewhere else. We need to place it where it's actually going to be seen. And this, of course, also works for video. Um, and as you can see here, it's, it's pretty accurate. It gives us like a really nice indication, especially um, in this scene right here. Right? We, so we know, okay, this scene would be perfect if we really want to showcase um, the the product. All right. And now I'm jumping over. All right. So the main the main um, the main metrics that we're looking at um, with our AI tool um, are going to be the focus score. So how how centered um, are these are these um, these hotspots? Um, how are they? Um, how many do we have? Are they in like different locations? So we're trying to center everything. We're trying to keep everything nice and close together. So things of attention can benefit from one each other. And the second one is cognitive demand. Um, that basically means how hard it is for your brain to understand the visual in front of you. So um, a perfect example would be you know, somebody standing in front of a forest, right? So you have all this background noise with the different trees and it's, it takes you a second to find that person. Where's Waldo, right? Super high cognitive demand. Um, so we're trying to keep the visuals as simple as possible or as simple as needed. Cognitive demand needs to be um, really low, but not too low where it gets boring. And then um, the focus score um, should be as high as possible. And for that, um, I, I have a quick case study I, I want to show to you. Um, and that's going to be um, around focus. Um, if you have more questions about, about all of this um, and also cognitive demand, feel free to hit me up afterwards. I'm happy, happy to do also like a follow-up session um, on any of this. Case study focus and um, take a look. And we, we do have a, actually a little um, quiz prepared for you. So just real quickly, um, can you name the brand 
um, put it put it in the in the chat. And let me just see if I can I can see the results also. Yeah, I think you're on, on mute. Mm. Yeah, the poll is now live, so you can answer there. So uh, if you were observant and saw the brand, so it's in the poll uh, tab. Was any, anybody uh. looking into it? Now we get some answers. Yes, I, I, I love it. There, there was a logo. That's the first one yeah. that we have. Um, yeah. <laughs> there is also some uh, familiar brands to Finnish audience as well. <laughs> I guess uh, it, it wasn't clear for everyone that what was the brand in question. <laughs> Oh, it's it, it's almost like that was planned, to be honest. So don't feel bad if you um, <laughs> if you didn't see the brand, because um, I'm just going to show you a second version. Maybe this one makes it a little bit easier. So so for this one, I think it, it should be um, should be pretty obvious. Um, for those of you who still have no idea what I'm talking about, um, this the, on the left hand side was the original. And on the right hand side was the optimized version. So this was a um, little fun fact. Um, and by the way, great props to Avida that they let us share this case um, with you um, because it was really impactful for them as well. Um, this was a branding campaign, right? They really wanted to showcase the brand and um, especially in this like this um, skincare, hair care market, um, we have a lot of competition. So it's really important that we have strong branding. And what they did is say, or what we could see is we have really nice focus on the product, which, which is perfect. And um, we have a lot of attention on the headline in the center, but the Aveda logo down here at the bottom right is pretty much invisible. And that's really bad for an, uh, for an awareness campaign where you want to showcase um, your brand. So, so what we did is, and it, it's, it's nothing crazy, right? So all we did is we, we moved the head, the, the branding from from the bottom right corner corner of death as, as we call it right into the center for the first seconds and what this does is so we're up we have an uplift from two percent to 14.6 percent in attention on that brand on that branding of course we're then losing a little bit of focus on the on the headline um but the product actually likes this even better right so we have more attention on this overall area than we would have had before and with all the things that I've told you so far, this is probably sounds pretty obvious. Um, and when you do it, it is, but I think most good and simple, well, most good solutions are usually simple. Um, and the great thing about this tool is that we can really, really showcase how it, how it changes the outcome, how it changes the creative look overall. And um, how, how we do this, and I wanna give you a quick introduction on this. So the, the, the yellow part would be the focus score, and then the purple part would be the, the um, cognitive demand. And as you can see throughout the whole video, we have really nice attention uh, on, on, on the models, on the faces. The Aveda logo at this point kind of becomes like an enabler, it kind of becomes the afterthought, but that's why it's really important that we have it from the start. And we have like all this attention on there from the get-go. And then what we also did is we, we looked for these peak scenes right here. Right, so we have um, this was like a peak attention scene, um, and and this one right here, and then yeah, so so like all these peak attention scenes that we found, and we actually used them later for um, for display formats. So we were a little bit more cost efficient. We didn't have to use video only, and what you could see is that we have um, curly, wavy and uh, straight hair so we could actually really like nicely split up all these different hair types and um, have um, fitting communication for all these different women all these different people and um, with with their different hair and this um, is also like a really great example for how cognitive demand um, can really really go go up right so this is like what we call conceptual closure because we have this hard cut so this is something we would try to avoid um, 
what we couldn't do for this campaign. Um, and then you can see right here, so the, the focus is really nice on the Aveda, on the botanical care, on the CTA, yet and Decken. But just the background visual with that hair, um, just it just takes a second to, to realize, hey, what, what am I looking at? Um, and it's not a bad thing at this case, but um, if you, if you, especially for like the intro, this might be a little bit of a problem because you could lose attention um, on on the things that you actually want to showcase. All right, so that almost concludes um, our um, our yeah our time. Um, I think uh, one thing that I wanted to add on this one is. Um, we, you know, we were talking about the first second um, in terms of attention, right? And this, I think this really showcases why these first seconds of, um, of video of the ad are really important because you have to make sure the user knows what they're looking at. And especially for bigger brands, it makes a lot of sense to, to be in that. Well, not for all brands, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but for bigger brands, it really drives attention a lot because I already know, hey, this is a brand I know that I trust. This might be relevant for me. So we have like a really good, good framing for that. <clears throat> and while I was already starting with you know a little bit of my recap, I, I also wanted to give you like three main points um, that stand out to to me um, out of this whole presentation. And the first one is um, that's really important is understanding how these attention metrics actually impact your campaigns, um, how they differ from you know standard viewability metrics, um, and of course for this we're, we're always testing, right? So it's a um, it's a constant um, I don't want to say challenge, but it's con we're constantly learning together with our brands, finding out more, and um, I would urge everybody to do that as well because as you can see, it's just a really strong. Um, metric and also in terms of predicting outcomes. The second one is um, optimize your assets for the channel. Um, for us, of course, omni-channel, so we can make sure that it looks good on all your devices that you're working with Teats, um, but also in general, um, make sure that you're optimizing your assets um, for, for the platform. Um, I think that, that really, really helps. And, and the last thing is um, leverage things like these, um, like for us, it's the evidence-based creative framework. Right? So to come talk to Niklas or me, um, find out what is the best solution for you. And because as I said, if we really implement all these steps and we keep working on them campaign by campaign, learning by campaign by campaign, um, that really gets us um, the best outcomes um, over the long term. Yeah, and that was actually my 45 minutes. Um, well, not almost, uh, 43 minutes. Um, do we have any questions in the chat? Yes, we have. Actually, we have four questions. Ooh, I love it. Uh, yeah, Niklas would like to go live as well. So it's totally up to you. Yes. If you, uh, Ludovic, or Niklas will answer. But first, okay. uh, uh, thank you so much for your presentation. And here we go with the, with the final slide. So. So, are you guys ready for the questions? Yes, always. Okay, the first one goes uh, like this. Outstream market in Finland is still quite modest. Any advice for local market, local advertisers in what kind of needs outstream is suitable for? So, uh, when it should be used? Well, uh... I think it can be used for 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 uh, full funnel. I mean, we, we our background with this is it is in branding, so they were our, our formats are, are are best best suitable suitable for. But but we can provide also I mean solutions in traffic acquisition, and and such. But but I don't know if you if you concur. Ludwig, but I think you know branding is at the core what what we do. So I think that's that's where where we, we see our our products and offerings the most most suitable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then of course, I guess incremental reach, right? I, I guess this like this unique ad slot that we have um, with also a little bit different like different target group, different in view times. Um, I think it's really interesting, especially we see that if you have a little bit more complex topics, right? Because you just have more time. To communicate stuff, um, we can we can do that quite um, quite well. Yeah, and I think very very important for 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 Teeds is that that we know the the KPIs for the campaign. 
in order to provide you the best the best uh, formats for 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 the campaign that's that's super super important and i think that's one of the core things that we went through also in this presentation because if, if we don't know the 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 campaign targets and the kpis it's it's a guessing guessing game more yeah yeah very good uh very good answers the second question goes like this if an advertiser becomes interested in attention what are the most logical first steps so how to uh, get things going with attention because do you want to start or should, should i take it uh, from you from can take it, first. take it first okay so i i i only have the i don't have the um the, the, the look at it from from how it's done, who you have to talk to, but I can tell you what we do, right? So so the first thing is um, attention measurement with us is um, is really easy. So on TAM, it's just pretty much one click. So if you're already on TAM, um, the first thing that you would have to do is just start measuring and have a look, right? Um, that's that's the first part. It helps it helps you. It helps everybody. Just start measuring your existing campaigns and get a database. And then the second part is come talk to, to Niklas and then, of course, um, to your studio team um, and um, ask about these um, these optimizations. And then the next step, of course, would be um, and we do that either in a small way or in a big way, depending on uh, how much um, how far you want to go. Right. We, we're testing. So we, we do one creative that is your standard creative standard static, whatever you have. Right. You take it from from social wherever. Um, and then we we build one version, for example, um, where we do all these optimizations where we really try to focus everything um, using neurons, and then we just run them against each other, right? And then we then we see, hey, do we have um, do we have difference in attention metrics? Do we have difference in all the standard media metrics? Um, are we maybe running like the brand pools next to that? So um, it it starts with a small step, and then it's just to to build on that, in my opinion. But it's nothing nothing crazy. Um, like I said, it's yeah, I mean, I, I can I can totally totally agree, and and uh, I think in ninety percent of the campaigns in the branding campaigns we have run run here in Finland, we have used the Lumen attention attention as well, and we are going going through the the results with the clients, and I think the next step for for us in Finland in the Nordics is to run our first atelier session, which is a one and a half hour session with 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 uh, with client, uh, creative agency, and and media agency. To really, really, you know, get 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 to the bottom of, of things and, and 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 have clear, 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 uh, you know, targets and KPIs in order for us to to do the best the best formats for that that uh, certain campaign. Yes, thanks. And the next question is around CTV. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. CTV is a big topic also in Finland, but still a bit bubbling under theme. What do you guys expect to happen in CTV market in next few years? A big question. Well, uh, I think it's uh, especially I mean here for for the Nordics, uh, we just have uh, we just have launched our CTV offering. And we have we have two two paths in CTV. We have the CTV video part, which which we have launched in our in our thumb, in our platform. And then then as an IO, we have our CTV native offering, which which we which we had launched this summer. I think that's uh, that's the next the next big thing, at, at least in, in in my opinion. And then we can leverage. Uh, Different, different the formats and, and 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 the videos, and we can also utilize you know negative retargeting for 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 TV campaigns, which we can leverage you know incremental incremental reach for for TV and 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 as it seems now, I think we can we can uh, get uh, better results and and cheaper 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 contact prices also for 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 big big brand brand clients. Do you want to add something, Ludwig? No. 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 I, I mean, no. from from <laughs> Yeah. How the market is developing um, in the Nordics? Um, that's that's not my my topic. I think okay. Yeah. I mean, we, I just, I can just speak for for for, yeah. for Nordics, and I, I mean, we 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 on on the CTV native part, which I think is is the most intriguing ones we have. Uh, we work with LG, and uh, if we were just looking at how how many how many uh, TV sets 
we have in, in the Nordic countries, it's we are on a European level, which is a very good news. So just feel free to reach out if, if you're interested in to know more. Thank you. We have two more. Uh, uh, second reminding question goes like this. How does deeds help in production of added materials? That is that is a great question. Thank you thank for asking you that. Um, we have a good audience. Okay, so whoever asks this, thank you, because that's a really important topic. Um, one thing that um, that is important is we're not a creative agency, right? So that's so we're not building anything new, um, uh, like we're not developing new ideas. Of course, we're helping with input, but we we would never. You, you don't come to us and then we build you like a completely new campaign for for like a new yogurt. So we only work based on existing assets. Um, and there, um, we it, it depends on the clients, right? So we have clients um, that just deliver closed files. So we're working with um, standard PNGs, key visuals, PDFs, and then we're trying to um, implement that as best as possible. Um, but then, of course, we also have clients that are um, that are a little bit more open, and that's that's trust we have to build and earn, right? Um, so we have clients that are super open about it, um, who just give us their open files and say, hey, you already know what you want to do. Um, please rearrange that. So um, it kind of depends on where you are on your journey. Um, but um, we can, yeah, like I said, we can do some recuts um, and we pretty much need an existing toolkit of assets. Right. So um, that's usually like a standard TVC, a key visual as an open file. That already helps us quite a lot. But then we also ask people to, to look beyond, right? So I like the out of home example I showed to you. And okay. um, so all these types of creatives that, or assets that work really well, you have something that works really well on Instagram, send it over, maybe we can use it. And what we do is actually buy, well, for, for all these ateliers, we actually, and also for, the, also for the other campaigns, we look at the assets and we see, and that's why we also need a good briefing. Right? So we look at the assets and we're like, hey, what are the main points? How can we highlight them? How can we add a, like a, for example, you have like a like a um, like a poster with a lot of use piece on there, right? And it's kind of cluttered, and you don't really know where to look. So we would then build a version where we just split them all up, and you can engage with them in a fun way um, to make it easier for the user. Um, so these are the types of optimizations we do, and we just need a standard toolkit um, for for that. I, I hope that helps. Um, I have nothing to add, Ludwig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the final one goes like with, uh, this. How about highlighting services? Is it easier to highlight products or people? It would be interesting to see cases around services as well. Ah, uh, okay. So you mean in terms of attention? Um, yeah, exactly. or... yeah. 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 Okay. That's how I understand this. Perfect. So um, that's that's a great question, um, and I would always look at that case by case because there's multiple factors. Um, for example, let me just just showcase it to you real quick. Um, in general, that like this this was the video that I showed you. Um, in in general. Um, Products work really well, but also, like I said, the the, the hardwired. Uh, it's not the right one. I think this one is better. Um, here, you, here you can see it pretty well. So the product, three things are always driving driving input and the attention. The first one is products really really are something that is important. So if you have them nice and centered, they usually draw in a lot of attention. Copy right, written text is also hardwired in our brains that it's information that we need to read that we need to see. So that also drives a lot of attention. But something that is never beaten are our faces, are people. It's just hardwired in our in our DNA. It's the most important thing that we do as humans is to look at other people and see are they are they friendly, are they are they um, are they my enemy, right? So so it's just really important for us evolutionary to, to look at faces. So that will always draw on them the most amount of attention. But I would also like like I would always try to to recommend um, to have a look and probably like a second part of the question I would not always go and this is why we cannot just use this tool and let it do its thing and we always have to understand what is important about this campaign 
because if I were to show just the main the main focus points of this video in this case, right, I would just show three wonder uh, pretty women, um, but I wouldn't show anything about the product, right? If I just look at it from a pure attention point, so we always have to make sure that we understand the content, and then we see, okay, this one is the best scene where the product is shown. And this is the best scene where the, like a consumption scene is shown. This is the best scene where um, where the USP is shown, right? So we're always trying to find the best of these necessary necessary scenes. Just just one one input, Ludwig. Don't you usually recommend to put the logo in the upper uh, left corner instead yes. of down in the? <clears throat> yes, yes, exactly. So that's that, that's for for branding, and that's exactly what we did in the Aveda case. Um, here, I'm gonna have to right. they, they, they had it exactly there, right? So it was bottom right, and we call it corner of death. Um, you see 2.1% over here, mm -hmm. H&M, no attention at all. So for branding, and I think it also makes a lot of sense, right? So in the Western world, we're reading top left to bottom right. So the first thing that you're going to see is, is the branding. So we make sure that that is in there from the start. Yeah. Um, we're now we're now doing it a little bit different because we have like the first second where it's centered really big and then it moves to the left hand corner. It seems and to me that ma many of you know because these are consumer brands, this might be actually print uh, print first. So usually in print they might have it more in the in the right hand hmm. corner down, but but just just an, an, a guesstimate from my my side. That's really that's really interesting for me to be honest because I am not a print expert. Um, I, would, I, would, <laughs> I, would, I would guess that it has to be the same because also in print you're reading from left to right. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. for us, it really shows that top left is, is the spot to be. Yeah. Actually, we have time for one quick question. And this is uh, from me to you. I have been taking a look at Beat Studio lately when preparing to, to this morning session. And it seems that you have lots of uh, different ad formats there. What is your uh, fa personal favorite of all the ad forms that you are you you, you have there? Oh, that's a that, that that's a tough one. So so maybe as a as a background for all the people who didn't get the deep dive, we at, at Teats we have we have I would say unlimited formats because it's mm -hmm. our playground and we build new stuff every day and nothing nothing has to look like the other the other formats of course we have some learnings um and that that we use for all brands but we're tr really trying to showcase like each creative in the best way possible um that if so if you would do like a, just a creative session it would be like a full day where i could, would just explain okay. and you would you would all kill yourself and <laughs> but for for what my favorite creative is um so the I would go to for functionalities. So the, the first functionality is um, the flow, like this version right here. So having this these interactive elements in there um, really, really helps. Um, and it really helps also with for users to understand like to split messaging. And we can do a lot of things with these on scroll behavior. And the second part is uh, would be would be these things that are that are interactive. Um, yeah. Uh, I can I can we're sharing the presentation afterwards. I can also add some some other cases in here, like my two three highlights, and um, so people have something new to look at when they're looking at the presentation. Um, I think these really really help with understanding products. Um, we also have it for cars, right? Where you can have like a soft configurator and you can customize your own car within the ad. So these things um, I always find really interesting, and they um, seem to have a really good impact. And I think one, one, one actually very important uh, thing to, to highlight here is also that this is not only video. We are known for the for the audio video part, but but as Ludwig also said that went through, we do a lot of you know engagement, interactive display. So that's maybe maybe a thing that that's not had had that much much attention here in the Nordics at least. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ludovic, and thank you, Niklas. I think we had an excellent session today. Very good presentation, and uh, uh, now it's uh, possibility to say any final words if you have something in your mind. Thank you, IAB. Thank you, Ludovic, and please uh, contact me. We're open for business, so don't be a stranger. Yeah. Uh, and of course, thanks for the audience.
I think this was yes. excellent, excellent session. I think I would also say that just thanks for having us. Um, thanks for the for the for the time. Um, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have Bye. a nice day. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.